All right, everyone, and uh, once again, we're back at uh, another No Gear Required podcast. Today, I have here someone to me special because I read a quote before that if you know someone for more than seven years, he's no longer your friend, he's part of your family. And in this case, I know Renato Magno for over 30 years, even before we moved to the United States, used to train together back in the early days when we opened the Gracie Barra in Brazil. And here we are, 30 plus years later, still friends as more than even that, a family. And uh, we see each other quite often. Used to see more often when he used to teach under the same roof. Now he, it's kind of an extension to uh, my school and my brother's school. He's in Santa Monica, also has a lot of affiliations all over the country, all over the world, street sports. Uh, and if I'm not wrong, and I hope somebody there can go and correct me that, he's the only black belt under all five Machado brothers. I don't think has anyone out there that were embraced by all five brothers at the same place at the same time, which is very unique. Welcome, Renato. Good to Thank have you here. Thank you, to invite me to come. I'm very proud to be here and honored to be in the first black belt for the Machado for the first five brothers. And I get <laughs> the only one. My, my, <laughs> you know, I have a great time to be students. Jean Jacques always been the guy put him in the size and Barra old times, Barra da Tijuca, and take me over. I'm so lucky to have the opportunity to work here, specifically Jean Jacques Machado, because it changed my life, my style. All the brothers uh, have the opportunity to learn so many for Higa, Carlos, Roger, John. Each it, one is teaching private in the same little room. Isn't, isn't that funny? It used to be all five brothers at the same class teaching yeah. the group class together and sometimes two privates in the group class going on because this space was very limited. And Hanat is about that time. That's the beginning. He was actually arriving in U.S. before I did myself with my brothers. But... Uh, and we have so many great stories to tell. And uh, to me, is not only Renato is a champion inside the mat, and he competes a lot since back in Brazil, and until today he's talking about going to another tournament, which is going to be awesome. But outside the mat, I mean, he's another person that I don't know anybody who doesn't like Renato. I mean, every <laughs> all his students, man, they stick with him and... It's so funny and live with Renato and I know him and I know why for so many reasons why people like him so much. He's the kind of guy that lifts you up no matter what day of the week or how matter how you're feeling. You hang out with him, you're going to live in a different mood. <laughs> I think that's been part for the whole time in Brazil, the time we grew up together and uh, see you guys. You know, I'm a bad guy in Brazil, I have my bad times. But Jean-Jacques, all the guy pushed me. I always carried Jean-Jacques me in the beach or do something wrong or a lot of girl parties, you know. <laughs> Jean-Jacques was getting married. And uh, to see Jean-Jacques training, and the time he's a purple belt, have a chance to train for all his brothers. I never, that's the challenge. Like, I like to be like this guy here one day, learning for Jean-Jacques and give me the opportunity to move here. This is no... For me, it's a dream today. I always miss it to come to Tarzana. Miss training for Jean-Jacques. I try to use this technique. I watch you guys doing videos sometimes. Jay, Jean-Jacques, old school videos. And uh, the opportunity and the time, Brazil have a big depression and then to move it to the United States before Jean-Jacques. I have a chance to train for a couple of his brothers. I never have a chance to train before in the time. Let's let's do this. Let's go back in time a little bit because I know we did a live on Instagram a few months ago and... Uh, I wanted people to hear a lot of the things too. When did you start training jiu-jitsu? Let's see. We go back a lot of years, but we're talking I, about Brazil time I now. started training jiu-jitsu my first school, Carson Grace. My daddy got a black belt for Silvio Bering, Flavio Bering, Professor Flavio Your father Bering. also did train jiu-jitsu? My dad? father went training jiu-jitsu. He started in judo first. He got his brown belt in judo. Professor Medi. Oh, with Medi. My daddy went yeah. to the military school like his... You said he also got a black belt from Flavio Berry? Yeah, Flavio Berry, my daddy, before he moved to the farm. 
But my dad is always in the fresco ball game. He played tennis, um, Praia do Diabo. He's one of the founder of the fresco ball and the time is very violent sport in Brazil. He take for the Copacabana Beach. And he grew up in the VVA, the Carson Grace. You know, my I mean, grandfather have a house next to the alley. It was on your blood already. In my blood. before yeah. you started. And my daddy take me to the first Carson Grace Academy. And the time I think Professor Hole is there. That was in Copacabana. Copacabana, second floor. And I went to Carson. And I started with Carson. And there, very inconvenient the time, I went to the uh, Professor Jacaré for a couple months. Jean-Jacques lived in Teresópolis in the time. I went to uh, the Alianza School. I think uh, it was used Homero to call, used to call master. My Homero, daddy trained master, yeah. Homero Jacaré. Homero my Jacare. daddy trained there. He's next to the Apoado Beach. Yes. He, very in the corner, Ipanema, Copacabana. My daddy take me there. But I need to move to Sao Paulo. My daddy have a new business, new challenge for his farm, cacao, chocolate in the time. Did you end up get promoted or any belt when you... No, were no, I white belt. I get beat up. Then my cousin was training there. I went maybe two weeks, three weeks, and my daddy, well, let's move it to, moving let's to, move it to São Paulo. And at the time I do judo and Flamengo, professor, I forgot his name in the club. And I moved to São Paulo, and São Paulo don't have jiu-jitsu, only judo. And I say, no, I'm going to ask time jiu-jitsu, but at the time the judo in São Paulo family, Akira Ono, his father 12 Dan, and professor Akira Ono, 8 Dan, he opened the... The arms for my daddy. He knows my daddy. I don't know how my daddy knows these guys. I and, don't remember. And how long were you in Sao Paulo? I stayed in Sao Paulo training for eight, ten years, and then I moved to Rio. And I started doing judo. And the professor Gaston Grace opened the first Grace Academy in Sao Paulo. I saw more self defense. And every time I go to Rio, I show some self defense. But these guys beat me up because my cousin was already training. And I all start to train in Baja, like. The jiu-jitsu is completely different. <laughs> what, that's what the jiu-jitsu are like. And forced me to move it to Baja. And I get very lucky. My grandma have some... Just for you guys to get an idea, he used to live in the building right next to the academy. Yeah. And many times even jump from his window. I jump window from the garage for the, the garage Because you, you have a way to get into the school <laughs> that we find out later because of him, that he jumped from the window of his apartment and uh, ended up inside the school. The garage, the garage apartment. In, instead of going around the block, he just jumped in. It's like, whoa. He did a lot of real estate. My grandma bought a but lot of house in Rio and did a lot of real estate, do commercial we, real estate. Do you remember which year was that? I moved it to 80, Rio in 81, 82, 81, now, 82. Open. Um, 83? Oh, man. The first academy bar. I don't know. It's... I know we moved I think from it's in the 80s. Copacabana to yeah. Barra in, uh, in the 80s. I mean, 81 or 80, the first school called Grace Barra, no, Grace Academy, Barra da Tijuca, Olegario Marcial. Yeah, 81, yeah, yeah, 81, yeah, yeah 81, 81. Being... I look, I'm like, man, this guy's here, Renzo, Jean Jacques, these guys, you know, I live in São Paulo, like, oh, my cousins, these yeah, guys, really. who grew up together. Yeah. I'm like, man, I'm lucky. I <laughs> was in the time. I know very mature to absorb how good the jiu-jitsu. You know, get back in Rio, go surf, hanging up in the beach, beautiful girls all day. <laughs> but you, so you were it. It influenced you even at as a young age. Like you, you obviously valued the opportunity. Oh yeah, valued the opportunities. My daddy will tell the stories about Elio Grace, Carson Grace, Professor Carlos Grace. My grandfather's a doctor. Um, he. Met Professor Carlos Grace, the grandfather, because we have a house in Teresópolis, uh, in the Pimenteiras, or a couple it, neighbors from the Grace's house. It, it, the big house, the, na- the Grace go training. I go there sometimes, you see the guys rolling. It's, it's great cool. in a way because, like it or not, through the whole family history, you had the link with Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Through your grandfather knowing Carlos and to your dad, be involved with martial arts and train Jiu Jitsu, get a belt. Black belt, and then you end up Carson, then you end up going around, then I guess you end up found your house. Yeah. Then Carson uh, Grace, every time he see me before he passed away, he said, You creonte, your daddy training for yours. You went, he, the time he hate 
Carlinhos. Oh, yeah, always, he don't like Carlinhos Grace. I think it was a lot. Both a rivalry. Brothers, a rival. <laughs> it was a big rivalry. And like I'd be in the middle, like every time he see me, he always been cool. He give me a hug and everything. Like you parts from the yeah, family. Start with me. And like, he like Jean Jacques. He like the, the Machado brothers. So he's like, oh, I always see him. Oh, I train for Jean Jacques. <laughs> I never say I train for Carlinhos. <laughs> He's my daddy, you know, my daddy got his black belt there. Robson Grace trained there, him and his father. Carley Grace is a friend of my daddy, crazy guy. My I mean, daddy tells crazy stories. As you, as you can see, Renato has been, he's been around Jiu-Jitsu, and Jiu-Jitsu has been around him for so many early years. days of his teenager life. And why, and what they make you suddenly living that incredible life of Rio de Janeiro, And I remember you, you're doing well and uh, you used to do several kinds of business there and family and you know so many people until today. Renato knows, I don't know, so many people in Brazil. You say a name, it's like, oh, I know this guy who knows no, this we'll guy. Get luck, we'll get or luck. he knows that guy in person. No, we'll get lucky, went to good schools, good clubs, like uh, private clubs, uh, good relationship for a lot of people. You know, honors, before in Brazil, honors is very important to give your name. My daddy from the Masonaria, Mason, you give the triangles behind and sign a check, like <laughs> you have a cash, you know? It's kind of like a mafia, it's not a mafia. <laughs> and uh, I have lucky to went to private schools and meet a lot of good people and move it to Sao Paulo, give me a different relationship. Business guys, learn how to do business for my family. Yeah, Jean Jacques, I moved it to real to manage a store. Jeans called Foro, remember? Yeah, I used to have a, I think one, a, yeah. one of the most famous store there. And yeah, the, jeans. For like a thousand dollars jeans in the time, like very famous. You got a, my friend bought a, this machine from Japan. You make the jeans blue, black, and scratch the jeans, make old. And then he say, hey, you know so many people in Rio, you like to move it there, you've been the manage, management. I'm like, hey man, let me make it a try. And um, at the time I do business, go to college and do little business, and I have the opportunity to my grandma living in Rio in the time. And Give me the house to stay in front, the bar, and the best place in Rio de Janeiro, and the, bar that <laughs> the best beautiful girls. Like, what can I go work there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I got lucky to get these guys there. Everything went together, you know? Is, is there any funny story you can share from that time over there? We we'll have so many ones. Maybe I can talk to him. I... Jean Jacques always been the nice guy, his <laughs> brothers. His, we'll have the bad guys, hands, or go on the beach. Like, if you're a friend for hands, you suffer this side. If you're not a friend for hands, you suffer the other side. <laughs> you know, we need to have this kind of environment. And, and uh, I was, remember one time, um, who trained Jean Jacques teaching a class. Jean Jacques, his brother, teaching a lot of classes there. Zé Beleza, Leon Teixeira. And uh, Renzo's training a little bit. Renzo show up in the gym, do 20 minutes training, leave, and, and this guy's always busy. And um, Ralph show up there, he's little for his sister. He say, yeah, these guys try to say something for my mom, tell me to go this place, and we need to go on the beach to teach a lesson, do you remember? <laughs> and they'll have a Volkswagen car from one of our friends. One of those Beatles, very Beatles small. Beatles cars, Volkswagen, we'll put a 20 guys inside this Volkswagen, Jean-Jacques, <laughs> me. And squish. I'll start to beat everybody in the beach, who's there, <laughs> who's not there. <laughs> It's like a movie story. We'll have a great time there. Everything you did in bar, you did for the love, for the sport. Sure, I, these guys, a lot of respect. I, th I think everything, you know. sometimes people might hear the stories, get the wrong idea, but with things that happened back then that somehow in my understanding today was needed to happen to get where we are today. You know, those oh, yeah. altercations there, every, every day nobody got hurt or nobody got damaged in a way, but it was kind of a learning lesson to all of us. And doing that and compete so much in Brazil and winning a lot of things in Brazil. Yeah, you guys. Why, why you decide to move to America? No, let me go to tell my story. Where I got the, the day I went to see Jean Jacques for Valide Ismael in the uh, Atlantic Sul. Yeah. That day I say, I'm going to do Jiu Jitsu. I'm going to stop in the Jiu Jitsu. I'm going to get better. Wow. So that was like That's your the moment. That's the day kicking my moment. I see, I don't have so many crowds and the, all these guys from Copacabana, Carson Grace, big team in the time, in the, like, where did you be in the fight there? 
you know, big night. I remember the way Jean Jacques prepared himself, have the opportunity to see his training and getting prepared for the fight. And if everybody's scared to fight Valide. And Jean, if Valide is a brown belt. It was a, they, they didn't have enough black belts. don't have belts. a black belt. Jean Jacques put they, himself in the line and nobody they, did that. After this day, I like, man, that's the guy going to training, the discipline he have, and the crowd and, and fighting Valide, you know, on the time. You know, he's better than Jean Jacques. Jean Jacques put his arm and everything. Jean Jacques give a, it's like a, the day for Circo Soleil. I never see so many techniques in my life. <laughs> I said, after this day, I'm going to stay here, man. I need to learn this jiu -jitsu, you know? That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, the day that I saw Jean-Jacques fight, well, Jean-Jacques trained me for a couple of times. I've never been interested in competing too much. I've been getting the fights in the streets. That's what I don't like get beat up. And I know I have the best coaches. Jean-Jacques trained me for one competition. I think I got second place in the Blue Bell. Yeah, I do I was... some private for Jean-Jacques, and Jean-Jacques helped me out. I'm in the sport. I lost in the end for some guys there. But then my mind never there at the time. I think my mind went there the time I moved to the United States. And I'm like, now I'm going to take this for my life. Because I got so much for these guys, the experience, how Jean-Jacques. They most for Jean-Jacques. And he got the time, he don't teach me too much. It's more Carlos, Jean-Jacques, Carlinhos, Zé Beleza. But more Jean-Jacques, the classes I can go. And after this day, I remember, man, if I move in the United States, I'm going to get good. I need to learn Jiu-Jitsu. And the only guys I learned Jiu Jitsu at the time, the, his brothers. At the day I remember Jean Jacques, the way he trained, he put himself and trained by himself, do his diet, have a daughter, you know, Julie at the yeah, time, yeah. a lot of big it was responsibility, a big challenge for Jean Jacques, a lot of responsibility. Yes. Responsibility. That's the guy going to give me the discipline, the, the one I need. And I moved to the United States, I think is the consequence. Everybody like coming here to surf, have fun. And I get in a good time. I come in here, he got first put all the bad boys to try to beat me up. Bob Bass, Chris yeah, Alders, I did the good. I, I beat the, the guys out. I'm like, Higa, man, you have the best guys here. Higa, he don't wait anybody to get out from the airport. Oh, you get there, let's go training. <laughs> That's, you're I'm welcome like, oh, to. And I blew bell. I'm Poco LA. Bell on the time, <laughs> getting my five stripes. I mean, nobody care about the stripes. I'm like, Bob Bass, this guy is good. You know, Chris Howard, Bob Bass, and Chris Posnick, yeah. big guy, like, who these guys, you know? <laughs> and I asked Hicks, Hicks, this guy gave me little problems before, you know, like, oh my God. And uh, I have, went back to Brazil, tell my grandma, I think I'm gonna go to the United States, I need to, my grandma's always tell me, why you guys don't move to a college? And the time a lot of Brazilians have the opportunity to go to Colorado, extension for some schools in Brazil, to study English, do some business for six months, one year. It used to be very common at that time. Yeah, to do a cheap, not so much money. Student exchange. exchange. Yeah, Roger did it. Yeah, right? all my brothers did yeah, that. Your brother did that. They like come him, here, man. live in a yeah. in a house, and a lot of people put their houses like up for receiving the foreign people to come and live in the house, go to the college, learn English. It's kind of a, it was something very nice. Which yeah, very nice. I missed the opportunity, and I said, now is the second opportunity. And the time I come to visit here, a couple of my friends here surfing. Like, you know, I, I'm going to stay. I don't been doing anything in Brazil. The president froze everybody's money. Yeah, My no, business before the think, real estate. I don't think people understand well when... And uh, the guy cut five zeros. Like, you have a million dollars next day, you have $100,000. People are like, going crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he hurt my daddy business, hurt a lot of family business. People start to kill this guy. They, and I have some money saved because I did it very well in Baja. I sell a lot of real estate in Baja that shook, like for $300,000. People come in cash. Pay cash, give a car, motorcycle, <laughs> or got anything, <laughs> horse. <laughs> and I sold a lot of things. People like living bar, getting married, young couples. Yeah, you like was, living there. Man, nice that was a the paradise time. there. It still be. It still even be. Know all this, Today it's more like Miami. But it's to be, yeah, very nature. Not nature, much, yeah, not nature. much like uh, some streets is still dirt, not asphalt, and yeah. no sidewalks. It feels like you're living in in a the country in a, beach area. In in an area that is nothing can be built. I don't think back then we could have a building more than three floors. No, four floors. Four. 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 That was the max. That mean. No, in the Jardim Oceanico, in Barra, or Little Barra, only you can go for four. It was incredible eight time. Units. It was incredible. And you have the time. penthouse on top. Beautiful. The penthouse will throw so many parties there. Then then you came here, had a great time. You go back and tell your grandma, hey, my grandma, I think. Yeah, I'm no, I come here. He goes, why well, you don't stay? And I have a couple of friends here surfing. And they're like, you know why? The dollar's good. And the time I have a lot of dollar. 
you can uh, change the extension in Brazil the time because the AI is so cheap and the people's got the zero. I was like, you know what? I'm going to sell my motorcycle, my car, go to the United States. I come in here, stay, training fee here. And I remember I went back, I think I talked to a few hands, I said, Jean, you need to go there. But Jean have a lot of students. If Jean Jacques have success already in the bar, he have so many students there. Because nobody likes to teach like he teach, be in the match every day, make the guys a big success. Like, and, or come from that And school. I think, we, yeah, we're all very fortunate to have the environment that we had in Brazil. Yeah. And, and the, the great thing is, to me, was see one by one people leaving Baja, Brazil, Rio, to come to U.S. And uh, I remember when you left, then I think two years later, I came here to visit everyone, and uh, you were already working and involved with Higgin and John and oh, teaching yeah. at Academy. You, you're right from the beginning. I when, stand when, the when, was just a agrees. seed. Yeah. It was just a seed. No I tree yet. I stand in the garage. Yet. I sleep with Carlos Machado in the garage. Sometimes I'm going to sleep in some other friend's house. My, the guy's crazy, partying too much. I say, no, I need to learn Jiu-Jitsu. I don't want to come here to keep a party and go crazy and go in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I got a job in Hollywood, bouncing in the best club. I remember I took, took, took a couple of guys out. The man is like, you you hired today. You stay here. You front door. I start to make money. I make $500 in the front door in the club, and the people don't make any money in the time. I got tax for everybody. I know Brazilians. <laughs> Some Italian gay guys come, hey, one day I'm going to take you out. I'm like, oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Some gay guys from Louis Vuitton or Chanel, Rodeo Drive, we call the, this club we call String Fellows. And it's so funny, the story about... I come, I stay, he said, you're going to stay, and I went back to Brazil and moved here in 1991, May. And I stayed in some George, Brazilian George, today's the manager for all these fighters, Alex Barato, crazy guys. This guy's part is like, man, I can't stay here. I'm going to go stay with Carlos Machado. <laughs> He's more safe. More stable. <laughs> more stable than Higa. And John, John have a kid. Cesar Grace, live Cesar, in the house. Yeah. Cesar Grace, your manager. She was to be a... One of the guys in the Yeah, he's a great show manager in the time, and he's the only have the America seats, and everybody like have the normal visas. And I stay, I like, man, that's gonna be the good opportunity. I'm gonna learn English, gonna sign up in UCL or Santa Monica College, or did El Camino College a little yeah, yeah, bit. We, it's we hard to learn English the time you think you know, but you don't know anything either. Start to, we're still learning how to speak English. And um, yeah, I start to stay here, love. The opportunity, I see the opportunity, nice, you can go surf, you go train in jiu-jitsu, the best food, you go to the supermarket, Whole Foods in the time, uh, Mrs. Goose, Mrs. Goose was a little, you go on a farmer's market in Hicksu here in the garage sometimes, you have a chance to go training for Hicksu, sometimes I don't have so much in Brazil in the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, everything is good. I have some money, I'm going to stay, and I stay. And the story, you know, to start to teach if John in the garage, help John and Carlos in the garage, phenomenal instructors, Carlos Machado, in particular in the time, he teach me a lot of how to teach patients. John, me, John. Um, for, for a lot of people there that might hear that for the first time, but Renato was, I think, the first instructor among the brothers to, to yeah. be teaching jiu-jitsu with us back in the garage days, back when we opened our first school in, the, in Tarzana, here in the valley, well, back yeah, when we moved from the open. garage to uh, actually outside the garage into a location in Redondo Beach. I mean, he's, he's part of the history of us. As I mentioned, he's not just a friend. He's the brother number six that has been with us since the beginning and saw... That well, wasn't easy. It was very challenging. It's challenging. It's from Jean Jacques. Give a lot of motivation. And I came what two years, three years later after you guys are already here, and I remember arriving and uh, I will have a nice school in Brazil and uh, I think I have everything going for me, but I did not have my family with me, and I came here to spend a month, and I said, man, I miss my brother so much, and I, it's it's not the money or stay in Brazil. I just want to hang out with. Yeah, I remember. Oh my goodness. Then we came uh, came in July, a following year in February. I was yeah, arriving 92, here. Yeah, 92. And I know I just saw the school back in the garage, and they had the school in Tarzana. No, in Sino? Yeah, in Sino, in Sino. With the one that Chuck Norris opened for us. Yeah. 
but I could not take that school, being our garage in Redondo Beach. I said, man, guys, we got to move out of here. Yeah. Jean always been the pump of the guys. I, I just push everyone. I said, man, they got to open the school. And, no, no, we're doing what? No, they got to. And we end up moving out of the garage. And which mm-hmm. was the best move we did? The best move. After that, we was just. Oh, Miss, I think he, the timing for having. We have different goals, you know. Jean Jacques like competing. Some guys like management. Some guys like to have fun. We're too young to administration the academy, and the time to be in business guys. And people like go that train, get beat up, lift your weights. We have the best trainers in the world. Train jiu jitsu. Yeah, no, go we're, train we're, sambo. Go train wrestling. Yeah, was challenge. MMA. And the time nobody. I'll go train MMA. Go do. The other day I saw a video. Somebody showed me on the park for the Dog Brothers. I don't know if you guys may remember the yeah, dog, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. He paid me a lot of money to beat him up. I can't understand it. Like, <laughs> we have a fake stick, a throw stick, and I remember he challenging. You there? The time he went to the park, he went to the park, Fernando, throw the stick, take the guy down, choke the guy out. And, you know, I can't believe I teach Danny No Santos another time, like Bruce Lee is a hero. Yeah, yeah. Like Mike Tyson these days. And this, Danny No I can't believe it. And um, me and Danny No Santos get so much together. I grew up in the farm doing a lot of stick and the hook stick from the chocolate trees. And I got good technique for stick lassos. And I start to show him one time. He's like, you better than me in these days. <laughs> <laughs> you need to teach me all these saron techniques. I I'll show that. <laughs> I, I, you know, I start to like, I said, I can't believe all these things coming together. Well, no, I need a lot of working, a lot of discipline. That's one that I have a lot of discipline. I mean, sometimes I like to quit. Or sit down there. Like, how many times are like, man, I can't be in Rio de Janeiro right now. <laughs> the things can be much more easy, huh? Jean Jacques never let you quit anything. I remember Jean coming, driving some old cars. I have a motorcycle, and Jean, be careful this motorcycle, buy a car. And you'll drive some old cars, and the students give it to us. And Jean, one day I'm going to have a Mercedes. <laughs> and he did. Yeah, I yeah. remember he said, man, how many times you get in the 405, the car broke, and you call the brothers, hey, the car broke, you can pick yeah. us up. <laughs> It was early 90s, man. That was I think it's a challenge to move another country and you don't know anybody and make you appreciate uh, the uncomfortable. You're comfortable. You don't need to prove anybody who you are, who you're doing. And the jiu-jitsu starts to getting very natural and more growing up. In <laughs> some way, you never have control. I, lo- I, I get my first job. Like me, Joe Machado, sometimes I did some security, a couple of things, and at time some guys try to do a delivery or whatever in the time. And this guy signed up, I was going to choke this guy out in the nightclub. The guy big, I got him from behind and choke him out, throw off the restaurant. I never have any fight. The guy, what do you guys did? <laughs> you hired tonight. And I start to make money, and the guy let you go out for training. Like, you guys don't need to work in the weekends. I know you guys are going to travel, competing, and everything. Remember Zeb Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I find the guy in the nightclub. A friend of mine managed these things. He's from Brazil. I pump in the nightclub in the Melrose. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, I live here, do jiu-jitsu, my child. Oh, jiu-jitsu, I like to learn. And my managers need to hire a new group of guys security for work in this nightclub. They're like, man, I'll dare tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Big guys don't speak English well. Tell the guy, you need to get out. You need to go or something. You know, I work in the front door. And uh, people give me so much money to get in this club and, and the restaurants. 30 days reservation called The Grill in the Alley. And the funny for the story, 20 years later, the guy who support your jiu-jitsu, support your day, you need to go working or go competing. And they're doing red belt for their marriage and Spartan and uh, Heat. The guy, one of the producers, marriage take me together and I sit on the table, the guy sitting there say, hey, you're the Brazilians? The jiu-jitsu guy choke people in my restaurant and said, that's me. Okay, believe it. This is how small world. <laughs> I'm going back in time here again with Renato. And I remember after so many years, and we worked together teaching the classes. Sometimes you come in the morning and I come later in the evening and vice versa. Then I remember, correct me if I'm wrong. You told me that your uncle gave you a gift. I don't know how much your money was back then. No, my grandma. Your grandma then, you come up to me and say, no, I think I'm going to buy a nice car. And I said, man, why don't you open a jiu-jitsu school yeah, Jean-Jacques said that, yeah. in Santa Monica, which is no school there? 
Dan heb je Miu Workout in Gold Gym, in Jean-Jacques Oost Workout in Gold Gym. Used to training. go to the Gold Gym in Venice, Venice and work out. Luis de Freitas, first Brazilian Mr. Universe, a friend of mine, Gabriel Vela de Freitas, and Thiago, his father. Yeah. And, and I remember that. And then you start thinking about, yeah, do you know what? And as I said, you have already a lot of students here and could yeah, be a great know, opportunity, but you never thought about have your school. No, I never have thought have my school before Jean-Jacques said anything. I was going to be here teaching. But you start to get the inconvenient the time to drive here, you live in South Bay, Jean-Jacques is going to move here, I like living in South and, Bay for and, the surfing. And my idea was, we're not kind of dividing, we just spread, yeah. we multiply. We'll never and take any is, students for anybody. Oh, no. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a pretty good distance, Santa Monica and, uh, and, and Tarzana. Oh, it's yeah. so far away. And, and South Bay, too. But it was a kind of a fresh era. You're the first school. I'm the first there. guy in Santa Monica, Ocean Park, in, in 1998. Uh, and you actually end up opening the school in Ocean, and which was um, very exciting to me. That see, it's, it's sure. like uh, you have a little. It's even now we're the same age. It's like you have a little kid that you now see a little kid walking on his oh, yeah. own. Only for you. I don't have the motivation. Sometimes I like and it. and open that school and became successful so quickly. And that's another question because you have a lot of famous people that train jiu-jitsu with you and they love you not just jiu-jitsu they love to I'm hang very, out with I'm you i'm very happy for that you have ricky we'll ricky ricky rocket uh, ricky rock come from here you from have the time Eddie Bravo. you have a very well famous boom boom mancini boxer oh yeah you have david, uh, david mammoth so many guys Greg, I mean, all of them they still train in jiu-jitsu and they'll start training most of them start training with yeah. you how is that having all these guys around and uh I think I get lucky and the time I moved to Santa Monica I still going to go to gym I still work for you to, to 1998 2001 I come here and in 2001 I stopped to compete and say now I'm going to dedicate for Santa Monica at the beginning I never take too serious to Santa Monica Academy I did a lot of private sessions I get masked in the private side. I did 120 privates sometimes. Yeah, you're not 80 private. Teach, I go there in the a morning. A lot of private. A lot of private. private like five classes. privates in the morning. I don't have so many in the group class. The school look is small. And I'll start to build the clientele later. Adam, I think Alan, Adam, training, and Kenny, the only guys I have to train. And they're all small little group of guys. And then Kenny moved to Santa Monica. Adam's going to college in Santa Monica. Kind of the things went together at the time. Kenny worked for the CR hospital. And... And I started going to um, Gold's Gym, meeting a lot of people, go to the T-shirts. Yes. St. Machado, street sports. And then one day, uh, El Bundy, El, El John Neal, he came to me and said, man, the, 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 God, the, the Grace Torres is too far away. You think you can teach me some privates? I said, oh, yes. And that professor Horry called me and said, no, no problem, teach. I believe in you guys, you guys from the Machado. And I started to teach Ed or Neil he start to connect me. Ed, you knew Christian Good Gasting. Yes. Christian Good Gasting is a Hicks student, start to train for me. Hicks don't teach anymore. He don't like the guys teaching there. He said, I want to train for an art. He's a Purple Bell. And he's a very famous writer, director. His family is in the movie business. And he started to send me these students. I don't know who this guy. I remember the first David Mamet to walk my academy. Ricardo, my assistant, did all the acting classes, study acting for his years. Like, this guy is David Mamet. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, who this guy? And Ed your new bring the guys for us. I thank the connector for Ed. He introduced me Ray Boom Boom. Introduced Dave Mamet. He started to introduce this guy. Say, man, this guy's gonna come training for you. And then I start to build a relationship with Dave. Ray, Ray is a good friend of mine. He went to bad times, good times together. I learned a lot of box. I have the opportunity to learn box. The oh, things I man. like to do for the best guy in the world. I can't believe it. I trained box for Ray. He knocked me out. I passed him out. God damn. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and then I start to come. And I think after I start to get in a little bit of creativity in the movie business. Yeah, because you did... Um you did work in a lot of things. Yeah, there. I did, and I still did, do. Uh, Some days I call Ray Renato. He's yeah. filming somewhere. I, I think got lucky. They gave me the opportunity. to think if you know jujitsu, you know how to teach him. You can acting natural. You need to work on only in your voice. You need a better English. Go training music. I tell a lot of actors sometimes what David say. Go practice music. Go work on your voice before you try to be acting. Act. Everybody have some natural thing. Then jujitsu, Dave. And 
I did the three movies with David Mamet, one in the end, the movie Heat, and later he went to Spartan, and he's like, let's do one about Jiu Jitsu, about your guy's life in the academy, about the bouncers, about the circle bar in Venice Beach, you go on the fight, Kenny get married, they'll break the, <laughs> this place, Tim, Kenny, uh, you know, I got a little popular there one time in Venice in Santa Monica because a lot of crazy guys come to the academy to challenge us. Venice have a lot of gangsters. Some guys went to Hickson before, and some guys start to come to me. I'm like, okay, put the gloves, let's lock the door. <laughs> and you have Travis, you know, Travis love it this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get the camera. <laughs> and you have a look, you know, start to build a good relationship. I think on the edge on your day, we give you some credibility uh, to start to bring the celebrities to the academy. The celebrities always been the same, treated like the same any students. It's not like you're a celebrity, you're going to be treated there, you're going to learn the same jiu-jitsu, you're going to be put yourself in the group class, you're going to practice with some guys sometimes. And the opportunity to teach the celebrities, I think, doing a great job. Working three movies with David, I did Spartan later. Yeah, I can work in the Red Belt. And, yeah, uh, and, and, and I think it's very interesting how... How jiu-jitsu connect yeah. people, but it also has to do with the person. Then now you guys understand why I haven't met anybody who doesn't like Renat and how how easy it is for him to make friends. Well, it, and I now have to jump in because for our audience, you were my first teacher. I remember that. Yeah. You know, I came here and I didn't even meet John Jacques for maybe eight months, something like that. Yeah, you I come only, to my class in the morning, only in the morning. I remember that, yeah. And, I'm uh, tough with you guys in the time, because Jean-Jacques make me tough. No, but I, I remember, <laughs> you know, I, I share with everybody, you know, today our world is different, but uh, back then, you know, jujitsu was, um, and you kind of talked about it a little bit briefly earlier, you know, somebody once told me, back then, it was jujitsu versus the world. The world. Now it's a little bit different, but back then trying to put it on the map, trying to expose it. So coming into the academy for the first time, I didn't know what to expect. And I walk in and then I see you and I'm like, oh God, you know, I just see you you're so like physically intimidating just in, without talking to you. And then you come up to me and you're like the nicest, most Is Denise polite. you walk in the time? The time you come? No, no. Denise don't walk in the time. Yes. Denise, yes. Denise, yeah, yeah, Denise yeah, was there. Yeah, and yeah. So, actually, Silverado was the Silver, one. I, he's Silver the one Silver I spoke Silver to Silver over Silver. the phone. He's the one that got me in. Because when I spoke to him over the phone, I'm like, okay. He knows how speaking is better yeah, than anybody. <laughs> I can do this. But you helped me so much. And then I remember two things. I remember I was really struggling. You know, it's hard. And I came up to you for some advice. I try never to like bother you. I've, I've always been that way. But you said, when you come to the next class, can you come a half hour early? And I'm like, yeah, I, but I didn't want to, you know, and you said, come a half hour early. And it, it meant so much. I'm like, wow, he's going to actually, and I even said, I'll, I'll pay you. I mean, what is it? And you're like, no, don't worry about it. Just come a half hour early. It'll just be you and I. And I couldn't make it. I remember I called you. I called him like, I can't come in because I used to have to sneak out to work. That's how I started uh-huh, jujitsu. jitsu uh-huh. But then I'll never forget the day you came up to me and you said you were leaving. And I was like, my heart just, I'm like, how can you leave? This is, you're my yeah. teacher. And you said, no, I'm, I'm just going to Santa Monica. I'm going to start my own school. And on one hand, I was so happy for you because uh-huh. you always want to see your friends grow. Yeah. You have good, we have good guys in your time, Carlos Valente. Oh, there are a lot of, a lot of great guys in the time. Don Newton, uh, you. But it was funny because I asked you, I go, well, what's going to happen now? And you go, Jean Jacques taking over the school directly. So. But the I, good way you see now, you're the the the, well, the but second the, but, guy now. Yeah, you, but but this you is take the, my position away. <laughs> But this is the funny thing. So I, I, I'm like, okay, and I left, and of course I knew who Jean Jacques was, but yeah. I had not met him yet. Jean Jacques time is busy doing competing, try to do a lot of different things. And I think I think back then too is Unida Jean Jacques being the top in the I, time like winning Abu Dhabi. I saw I saw the opportunity that Renat would have opened this school on his own. I mean he, he did not leave. He just was yeah, an moved. extension of our school. I mean if anybody goes and train in Santa Monica, you gotta go and see Renato for sure. Because we thought also his traffic is not as easy any time of the day now, and having Renato there, instead of people drive all the way here, no, you stay there, you have the school there. And another thing a lot of people do not know, and I want to ask you that, 
And now to school name is Street Sport. And even though it's an extension no. of our school, I want to ask you that. No, the Street Sport come before the, fo- the name is Machado. ACJ Machado is going to be the first school in Santa Monica. And the timing was 1998 to 99. The brother's decision to change kind of like Carlos. I think he get married, and you guys going to change the names. And I say, look, I can't be in the first affiliation. Let me open something. I don't like keeping my name so much. I don't have this responsibility to carry Renato Magno. And I like carry this guy's name. That's my coach. That's the guys I believe. I remember sometimes I'm freaking out. I say, I don't, I don't think I'm ready for that. You know, this guy's so good. And Jean-Jacques, remember one thing. You know jiu-jitsu. Jean-Jacques always say that to me. <laughs> or any guy that's going to fight, or any new student, or any challenge, Jean-Jacques. Hey, how long have you been training for me? Don't give me so much confidence to open this school. So like I opened that, I put a street sport in the time. Why? Because I, I see the time Jiu-Jitsu growing in the street, south of the fan, and the UFC start to coming up, and a sport is going to come bigger, and the street is what the people like in the beginning. People like more in the beginning, 90, 90-something, to fighting, to yeah, competing. You don't have so many competition. Yeah, there's no jiu-jitsu have competition one competition a year, you need to do samba or judo competition, the slap in the valley or whatever, or can put some students like to, to competing. And they're like, you know, I'm going to open street sports, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And the name stay, and I get lucky for the name. I think it's a good name. In the beginning, some guy, oh, sport, you're doing skate, surf, you know. We're doing street sport, you're fighting here. <laughs> or, you know, we will do Brazilian it, Jiu-Jitsu. It's open for a lot of things. But no, that's uh, that's curious. And, uh, but for people to know, Renato yeah, that's is, the name come. He's the only black belt that all five brothers agree with. I don't yeah, I, I try yeah. try and correct me here if someone out there, but I think Renato is the only one. I'm the only one. I'm very lucky training. And I have the opportunity to observe and learning for each one's different class. I know how, how Roger teach. I swear to God, I, I did the private for Roger. Every day, he's next door, I'm here, or take information, so, or know how to, Carlos, after he take, Carlos, or, I, I think, after Jean-Jacques get here, one year after he moved, two years old, he moved yeah, to Dallas. Yeah, he ended up moving to Texas. And Carlos is a very good instructor guy, no, like Jean Jacques in the some way, Jean Jacques involves more the game, the, the class the, more dynamic. I think the benefit is each one has a flavor. Flavor. You know? And I learned if, if Carlos a lot because I have a chance to sleep with him. And at the time Carlos left, I got very shocked. Like, man. He gets more in the competing to teach you. He's more to learn sambo. I drive Higa. I'm the driver for the machado to tell, tell the story. <laughs> I drive the van for all the brothers. Because the guys, only Jean Jacques is a good driver. When you put the van Higa and Carlos, I don't know if yeah, I stay I here. Don't trust <laughs> Back yeah, to man. Vegas, the car burns. The time, like, man, man, can't believe. It. Let me drive this van here. You guys go to sleep. I know you guys are gonna fight. Good to know. <laughs> the Jean Jacques was the best driver <laughs> for all the brothers. So I'm gonna get beat up by the brothers. Like, here you go sleep, John. John keep it talking, give you coffee. Carlos is sleeping. <laughs> Only yeah, me, Jean Jacques, oh, drive. Okay. <laughs> and have to drive or I drive. Yeah, don't let it, Carlos. Or Higa, Higa, like I teach Higa how to drive car here in the United States. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's a funny time. Yeah, that's the the opportunity and the competition time. Make it me get. I, I think I missed the opportunity time. I'm too young, and I'm all gonna make money of teaching. And these guys have much more opportunity to win the competitions. And the time is so much fun to go compete in sambo, go in for Jean Jacques in the van, or have shoes for sambo, go to San Diego. And I know, man. you know, we were take Higa to train in Santa Barbara wrestling. The guy Billy speaking English. Russian guy break us in the middle, get back home. Like he, I don't want to get back there. This guy barely can speak English. He don't know how to do tap. This guy <laughs> pinned your neck down. Next time I punch this guy in the face, he go down, down. <laughs> It's so much fun. And is there any competition that you participate in that stick with you until today? Yes, um, I think I lost a couple ones that time and. Knowing the master situations like for sweeps or Jucão, the Pan American training me a couple of things. I think the, the, the competition give me more, um, 
motivation and you feel the ready challenge. For... I feel ready. I'm in a good time. The time I competed in uh, the Master 1997 uh, in Hawaii, the first Pan American Master. And the guys never put our names in the credit. <laughs> I don't have names there if you go check. I beat a Mauricio Bering, one of the top Marcelo Bering students and Hicks students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kiko Veloso from Carson Grace. I remember Carson Grace for, hey, you're supposed to be my team. And I beat a Kiko Veloso for Carson Grace and I uh, did the, the open class. Carlos Machado fought in my middle class. Higa fought in the other class. Jean-Jacques stayed teaching here. If you John. John went there, I never competed. Jean-Jacques stayed in the academy. Yeah. Uh, I was in Hawaii that John, one. In Hawaii 97. I think that's the one because he got trained me a lot. And I got the responsibility. I need to represent these guys. And I start to understand how the responsibility to be in the name and you need to get a big showing of the best and the time it's between the formula. The, bit, the, the two Pan Americans I competed in 95 and 96 were kind of represent the Barra Grace. Or yeah. A lot of people yeah, don't yeah, know. Yeah. The 95 were competing for. Um, from yeah, that's our the school. Machados. That's the school in 96, that we came from. In 96, we're competing for the, some Barra Grace. If you need to put some guys there. So I think this one, for me, like, man, I'm going to represent my coach, Higa, and I can't lose for these guys. And I have a chance to get in the best shape of my life. I went to Hawaii. I surf and lift two weights. I'm 200 pounds, 205, and natural. Train weights every day if you lose the freight. As Jean-Jacques, teach me, Higa, Push me in the wrestling. I have a chance to train for Rico Chaparelli a little bit, my take it downs. I won by double legs, passing the guard. I don't have so many cameras in the time. I think I have only three of my fights. At the time, nobody carried the cameras or anything. I think this one, and the, the reason my wife say, if you if you go, my wife's pregnant for Thomas. Jean-Jacques take my wife two times to the hospital for, for the leave. <laughs> oh. I'm in Hawaii. Jean-Jacques went picking up my wife in the middle of the oh, where are you? <laughs> Jean-Jacques take his yeah, bring her to the hospital. Her. Yeah. And my wife, if you don't bring this medal, <laughs> you don't get back. And I said, no, I bring this medal for my son, Thomas. He born in 1997. Yeah. I promised Jean-Jacques, man, I don't fuck around. I'm going to kick this guy's ass. And I did that. I did everything I train. I get the guys back. I take the guys down. Everything have... Past the guard, everything I trained at the half guard for Carson Grace, everything went perfect. The day I woke up in the morning, I say I won this tournament. This is my day. And that's keeping the story, you know. And now I have the challenge, my wife calling me, hey, I'm tomorrow, Thomas coming. <laughs> oh, Jean -Jean. <laughs> that's what I think is the one is more important for me in my career and make me feel proud for my coach. And then he got, I beat a Hickson best students. Maurice Berg, and the time he owned the Hunter Kimonos. Okay, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Hunter Kimonos. Yeah. He, and I beat a Carson, Vel Carson Grace for Kiko Veloso and the time, big guys, guys competing more than me in Brazil. I like Marcelo Berg is very famous. I, I was scared about Maurice. And he later, he, I get bigger, all the same age, but in the beginning, he's kind of a little tough guy in Brazil, Hicks, you know. And I know his cousin, Marcelo Berg, very well. My daddy come from the Berg family, the Jiu-Jitsu. But Maurice never liked me too much. Because I went to the Machado team, or the Barra He's like, oh, you're another guy. He went to another team. Your father, your father grew up here. Why you went training there? And I have a little challenge. That's the challenge. And I have a chance to beat him up. I feel so good. He tried to be, he beat me a couple of times in the match. <laughs> and let me ask you this is... What would you be doing if you're not doing jiu-jitsu? I don't see, I don't do anything if I don't have jiu-jitsu in my life. And what jiu-jitsu represents to you? Jiu-jitsu represents a lot of things in my life, the way I like to live, the way I need to train jiu-jitsu one, one hour a day. If I don't go teach, I go on the gym. Uh, jiu-jitsu is part of my life. But I like to do a lot of the other things. I like to be involved in a fight choreography, doing some stunts. I have some friends go travel. I love to do motorcycle, surf. My jiu-jitsu is part of my life. I, I now, for this COVID-19, kind of, you appreciate or have this jiu-jitsu life to keep you on basic, you know, balance. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know, i never going to retire for jiu-jitsu. I'm going to always be in there. I train for every day. I love it to train for my students Sundays, open match. I love it, the child. I love it, the child. I love it to learn new things. And... I don't know. I don't know. I think jiu-jitsu, I'm going to die doing jiu-jitsu. <laughs> I think you're going to live more doing jiu-jitsu, yeah. for sure. 
I'm yeah. more young. Today, I know much more than before. I think I'm much more technical these days. I think today I can do much better in the competition. I've been thinking about to get back in the competition, do some masters, some open, maybe. Do you see... Not to prove it for anybody. For myself, I like this challenge. From, no, for from sure. the time you start training, do you see a, a big difference from today's time in Jiu-Jitsu? Yeah. Big difference. The guys train more. The competition have rules. Uh, the guys lift weight, have just different supplements. The wrestling, a lot of people train a lot of wrestling. It's not time to train a lot it, of judo. It becomes, it becomes more kind of professional. Yeah, I getting more say. professional. A lot of the, the game is changed. A lot of, but it's, if you have the fundamentals, the basics, the balance, the controls, like I always say, what you need to do in jiu-jitsu first? Take the guy down. Second, you need to pass his guard. Third, you need to get a position. At the end, you submission. So that's the jiu-jitsu I learned for these guys. I don't want to death for points. That's why I start to stop it to compete at the time the points come. I never been, I get too nervous. After I pass this three, four minutes, I mean, my like, oh, we're gonna kill this guy. Now I think today I'm much more calm than before. I'm much more confident for the adrenaline. I feel more comfortable today. I miss the opportunity to compete more the time you were young. Don't have so many competitions. I think, I think it was, don't have. I think yeah, more you're competing, in, in more early better days, you get. In early days in the U.S., we did not have jiu-jitsu tournaments, and which makes some years of gap yeah. of us competing because we actually prepare and teaching people what jiu-jitsu was first, and later on came okay, One time, you, if you train people, you don't train yourself in particular. You can't use the guys to train yourself in your privates. I learned that from some guys. You can use the private for yourself. But sometimes you're teaching the guy and the guy in different level to push you. But Jean-Jacques always proved that because the time you're competing, you don't have so many guys good in the United States. Jean-Jacques never went to train for anybody. He trained for his students. I trained for his, my students and I learned this for Jean-Jacques and I did that very well. I remember the time Jean-Jacques going to Abu Dhabi, he's going to do MMA, I always train to go, I never go drive anywhere or never bring anybody new to train for you. No, we, we have to use We have we techniques. Have. We have what we have. And But today, these guys have so much more information. The techniques know the same in some competitions, like the leg locks and, you know, the go-go platas and the shoulder locks. You see the kid who won the, the competition? Yeah, the buggy, buggy, buggy choke, yeah. The triangle body. Mm -hmm. My student, Ed, um, Ed, no, Ian and Evan went to the men's brothers start to teach this kid the basics. And the, My student did that before in the car a long time ago. I'm like, man, what are you learning this? Oh, no, I'm very flexible. Put the hands here, do the triangle shoulders, he called. So there's a lot of techniques you need to be in watch. If you're a jiu-jitsu instructor, you like to make your students getting better or have a competition team, you need you, to be in. You uh, keep yourself current with the... Yeah, watching videos, practicing academy, and, you know, bring some guys. I think in the last couple of years, I have a couple of guys coming from outside the academy for no gi and help a little bit of academy, the no-gi areas. I always been good in no-gi. I learned a few of them. Jean-Jacques, two times they just see. I be I learned a few Jean-Jacques, like, no-gi, I'll take it again in the summertime. But I think some guys coming like from Ed Bravo, like Adam, one of my black belts. He did a big improvement in your academy for no-gi. And the techniques I never did, and I think the techniques like, uh, I don't think it's for everybody. And the sound the techniques coming for no gi for Ed Bravo, he learned yeah, yeah. adaptation. He starts to put it together in a pack to my academy and I feel the students getting better. In some areas, he need to learn this kind of approach for no gi. So most of the time, I try to bring different guys in the academy. I think uh, the way I get connected with Rico Schiaparelli, Randall Couture, for a couple of years, helped me a lot of my wrestling. I love the wrestling. And the pumblos, the clinch, the head clinching. Put it together for Rico Schiaparelli all these years. Rico's still teaching my academy now every Friday, no gi class. It's an amazing structure. I learned how to have a clear wrestling mixing for jiu-jitsu. It's not like adaptation, you know? Like, like Rico say, the jiu-jitsu on the ground, that's where the wrestling is stand up. And, and let me ask another question. I think this is the easiest one, and I'm sure I'm going to have to make some compliments into that. Who, who is Renato Magno? Who are you by you? 
Renato Magno, he's still learning, <laughs> and he's still learning about himself to be a better guy, a better person. And try I, now I'm 52, 52, 53. That's a good question, I, I think man. I, I'm another uh, guy. I'm still young again, more motivation than ever. And uh, I still learn about myself. I think I have a lot of to improve, a lot of to come for us. You know, a lot of dreams. You know, I like to maybe one day have my ranch, my horse, you know, moving from LA, live in a simple area. Country guy, I grew up in the country. I love it being the horses and the farms. And, uh, you know, do the project. From my life is a challenge every day. I woke up in the morning, I'm looking for do something different every day. Maybe go surf, go training, some guy new in the academy, new, new, new teaching. So, I think the United States is one of the great country. It's so sad I know in this divide country and all these pro problems I know. I think the United States give me a, one of the, my best college in life. I, I owe so much about this country. I'm feeling America. Really, I'm American citizen. I'm more American than Brazilian today. This country give it to us. The to be a better yeah. guy and a better life. Um, you know, what you learn? Uh, that's part for the life. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, it's interesting because throughout the our time, you've mentioned a bunch of times how lucky you are, like lucky. And I don't think luck has anything to do with it. I think that you're somebody who is receptive to learning and you you attract yourself towards people that you can learn from who can help you grow. I think that's the magic we have. Yeah, that's the magic. You have. Both of us yeah. with, with Jean Jacques, it, it's it's transformed my life. But your ability to be receptive and work hard. Yeah, well, sometimes you sit down here, you can't believe you make money in jiu-jitsu, have fun, or have own academies, you know, change lives, people. You have so many students send so much great masters. I think that's the price. There's no price for that. And if I need to do it again, I think. It, Today I did a much better. I'm still doing for jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu part for my life. I'm never gonna let jiu-jitsu go down or people um, using jiu-jitsu for bad things mm -hmm. or try to lie to the students. I hate that. Yeah. The guys doing things to make jiu-jitsu looking bad in, in some ways. A lot of people today try to take the history. It's hard to take the history. Yeah. Nobody never gonna change the stories. You know. I think I have to make some uh, addition here and who's, who's Renato Magno. And as I mentioned before, he's like, I know Renato for more than 30 years. Uh, he's no longer a friend. He's my family too. And uh, we always know that we're there for each other and any time of the day, good, bad. And I think it's someone that made help in a way our our journey in america is have someone working with you side by side having so many danger moments in a way some a lot of down moments in a way but having each other's back in a way and made a lot easier for us to conquer our space in the world especially in jiu-jitsu and i think in having you as a family member it's been one of the great additions jiu-jitsu could give it to to me and my brothers definitely I really and uh, we're looking for more adventures in life, in a good sense of the word. And I think uh, I do really appreciate from from the bottom of my heart for all these years that you've been with myself and my brothers there, day in, day out, and and make possible for us to have the life that we have today. And you've oh, made yeah. and you've made an incredible impact on me. Oh, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, that's what's more important well, for us in life to maintain friends. Like you know, never been so much connect, and now maybe. Getting a little bit more because you work for Jean Jacques, yeah. you know, still far away, but a and, lot of respect for and all people. You guys. Get a, a, also a, a little bit of idea of uh, who Renato is, how how easy he makes friends, and how easy he continue to have friends in all areas for for life. Thank you, my brother. Thank, Thank you for you, being here, appreciate man. It. I really, appreciate really you guys, greatly appreciate it. Uh, good lucky for this year. You know, gonna have a great year next year. If you have Jiu Jitsu, you don't need lucky. Yeah. You have it all. And I have the responsibility, I know if you guys don't know, to start to manage Jean-Jacques maybe for a fight next year in Brazil. I'll try you to see, put I'm, together. I'm looking for, I'm, I'm picking a fight. Be, yeah. I'm looking for that. And <laughs> the people fun. are picking a fight for me too. I want, I'm all in. You These guys always that. call me before, call Jean-Jacques, say, hey, what do you think, Jean-Jacques? 
you do, you, please, you can talk for him. <laughs> you guys put him in this responsibility. I say, I can like it there. You yeah, know? Let's, yeah. let's do it. Let's do it next year. <laughs> Renatão, thank you, Jay, to Brazil. Boa, obrigado, Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, another Jan Jack Machado. No gear required. I'll see you guys soon. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.